coming up next on MASL Primetime. The Monterey Flash were the last remaining undefeated team in the league. Could they continue their torrid start to the season? It was an emotional game for Freddie Mugin and the Dallas sidekicks against Tacoma as the team rallied around its leader. And the voice of the sidekicks, Matt Thornton, joins me via Skype to talk about the start the team has had to the season and its rivalry with its new Dallas neighbours. All coming up next on MASL Primetime. MASL Primetime. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Alex Bastjevansky. The question has come up time and time again. Which has been the most improved team in the MASL this season? Well, going by the standings, the answer's a pretty simple one. Last season, Turlock won just three of 24 contests they played, finishing last in the old Pacific Division. Well, this year, it's been a whole different story. Heading into week seven of play, the Express had already equaled their entire win total from last season, sporting a three and three record. Now they had a chance to move above the 500 mark last Monday, but it wouldn't be easy as they were in Mexico, taking on the league's last remaining undefeated team, the Monterey Flash. Highlights in this segment are brought to you by Miter Soccer. Miter is the official soccer ball of the MASL. Monterey was a perfect 7-0 heading into the contest and they struck first. Estrellita a la ofensiva. Ahí hacen el cambio. Dale. Y el disparo. Gol. Hugo Puentes, the opening strike for the flash. Turlock evens it up though. Uh, Joaquin Rea playing the bank off the boards and it's 2-1. All Monterey from that point on though. Omar Santillan with the fancy footwork rings it off the post but Victor Quiros there to slam home the offering. 2-1 flash. Skip ahead to the fourth now. Monterey up 4-1. A nice passing. Eric Rosas punches it in to make it a four goal lead. Uh, down 6-2, Cal draws to within three. Luis Brambilla tips it home. Uh, that's as close as Cal would get, though, as the Flash stay perfect. They win 6-3. Dallas hosting Tacoma in an emotional game, and we'll get to why in just a moment. The sidekicks draw first blood. Arthur Evo collects and smacks it past Danny Waltman to make it one zip for Big D. Just a minute 10 later, Philip D'Souza going hard to the net. It pays off. Dallas up by two goals. Back to Arthur Evo on the break. Great ball control. Dances past Waltman. Dallas leading three zip after 15 minutes. Second quarter, Tacoma wakes up. Michael Ramos, one of the goals of the week, starts it at midfield. Deposits past Juan Gamboa. Uh, 15 seconds later, Ramos again, top shelf to make it 3-2. Now, we mentioned this was an emotional game for Dallas. Here's why. The day before the contest, the father of sidekicks forward Freddie Mugin passed away in Brazil. John was just 66 years of age. Freddie, though, came out and played the next day and the team rallied around him. And how about this? Freddie gets what turns out to be the game winner for Dallas right there. He dedicated the contest to his father, who was his biggest fan. And it was an emotional moment for this guy who's been such an instrumental leader for the sidekicks this year. Mujin showing the heart of a lion. Absolutely gutted, but it means everything when you've got your guys there to support you. The sidekicks pick up an important win, but on this day, winning, understandably, was secondary on the mind of this tight-knit group. Okay, the KC Comets hosting the Milwaukee Wave over 5,000 on hand in KC. A great crowd, unfortunately, Milwaukee spoiled the party. Luis Oliveira hits first for the wave and they led 1-0 after 15 minutes of play. Second quarter, the Comets equalized. Leo Gibson uh, pounces on the wave mistake and the player coach doesn't suffer fools. 
he makes you pay. 50 seconds later though, Alex Bradley smacking home the rebound to put Milwaukee back out front. Second half, Ian Bennett uh, sets up in his office at the side of the net, makes it 3-1. Casey not going away quite yet though, Robert Palmer to Stefan Sokic. Uh, one goal game after 45 minutes, Milwaukee pulling away in the fourth though. Lette to Bradley for his second of the day and the wave would cruise from that point on as they topple KC by an 8-3 count. Rafa Diaz with 14 saves on the day for Milwaukee. Okay, your MASL points leaders through seven weeks of play and Nick Pereira, a slim lead over Enrique Canez, followed by Ricardo Carvalho, a Brian Aguilar, Leo Gibson of KC and Frank Tayu of the Ontario Fury. Welcome back to MASL Primetime. Last week, we had Baltimore Blast superstar Vinny Dantas on the show to talk about his team's performance so far this season. The Blast were coming off a weekend in which they'd won both their games, including a huge overtime triumph over powerful Utica City. So, after an uncharacteristically slow start to the year, Baltimore appeared to be back on track. They faced another massive test, though, last Saturday, as they hosted the Florida Tropics, who had lost just a single match up to that point. People thought Florida would be good this year, but I don't think anyone expected this level of excellence. Baltimore hitting first, though. A sweet passing between Jamie Thomas and Muhammad Ndiaye and Muhammad. The finish, one zip blast. The Tropics respond, Hugo Silva, great toss to Zach Reggett. And it's a Zach attack. He knocks it up at one apiece. Back and forth they go. Daniel Peruzzi, that will be on our primetime plays of the week. The Screamer to make it 2-1. They'd make it 3. Vinny Dantas, of course, adding to the Dantas dynasty. 3-1 Baltimore after 15 minutes. Hold on, though. Lucas Montaleras crushes it past William Benzella to cut it to 3-2. Second half, 5-4 Baltimore at this point. Peruzzi getting his second of the contest. Uh, to get the two goal advantage back. Fourth quarter, Florida showing its moxie. Down 6-5, Reggett gets his brace and sends it to overtime where Victor Pereira feeds Ricardo Carvalho on the doorstep. Florida continues to be dominant through seven weeks of play. They dropped the blast for the second time this season. 7-6, your final. Okay, Mesquite hosting the Tacoma Stars. A star is up 1-0 when Alex Megson does this, and that is definitely going to be in our top five plays this week. Uh, sublime strike. Second quarter, Nick Pereira already with one goal on the day. He gets his brace. Little tap home. That makes it three zip for Tacoma. Mesquite would get it going, though. Anthony Powell squeezing it past Danny Waltman. And a buck 17 later, Oscar Romero packing some TNT in that right boot. Ooh, bar down to cut the uh, deficit to a single goal. But with a score of 4 2, Alex Megson named the game's first star, picks his spot. Tacoma up by three. In the second half, Mesquite staying close. Oscar Romero crushing the offering past Waltman that pulls to Mesquite to within two. A comeback, not in the cards though. Nick Pereira flicks home the offering. Tacoma picks up a much needed win. They've gotten off to a slow start this year. That's just their third win of the campaign. Rochester yet to win uh, in their expansion campaign, but for a while it looked possible. Uh, not exactly their best start though. 45 seconds in. Dylan Hundelt makes it one nothing for Harrisburg. Gary Bowden responds with a beaut though. Bending it past Jesus Molina and the Lancers. Tie it up. Two minutes later, it's Hundelt getting his second of the contest, though. And that makes it 2-1 for the Heat. And then Tom Mellor 
ripping the offering past Wilkin. 3-1 heat, and that lasted into the third quarter. Uh, Daniel Valella outraces a couple of Lancers and makes it a three-goal bulge, but that's when Rochester gets it going. Michael Cunningham smashing it past Molina to make it 4-2. Uh, and yeah, they rightfully celebrate. And then a buck 35 later, Daniel Reger steals and hits Peter DiLorenzo. Rochester within a goal. They can taste it. Unfortunately for them, Harrisburg pulls away in the end. Francis with the tally, 7-3 final. Rochester still winless, but Tim Crawford knows the team needs to just keep at it and those wins will come. We had times, it's just like every game, there's times when we're when we're there and there's times when we switch off but I mean this being our closest game we thought it was going to be a lot closer we felt like it was a lot closer than it was we just try to grind it out and work hard every game but you know sometimes you don't get the results you want and it's just it's down to us to make it happen. Okay Sonora back at home on that gorgeous red turf hosting St. Louis uh, free kick there's a hole in that there wall Adrian Miller exploits it one nothing second quarter with the score tied 2-2 Dudica Carvalho making it 3-2 for the ambush, but the wheels fell off for St. Louis after that. Efrain Martinez, uh, the goal, and then jumps for joy after tying it up 3-3. Enrique Canez had a ridiculous game for the Solas. Uh, watch as he gets tippy with it at the side of the net, the flex at home to make it 5-3 Suns. And in the fourth quarter, with Sonora up 9-5, Canez uh, bringing the magic. Putting the Solas up by five, and then the absolute beauty, Enrique skying for the strike. Sonora had a ton to dance about on this day. St. Louis came into this game playing extremely well, but back to the drawing board after getting spanked 12-7 south of the border. Okay, let's take a look at your MASL goal scoring leaders after seven weeks of play. Frank Tayu continuing to lead the way with 16. But uh, Brian Aguilar and Enrique Kenyas have closed that gap. They're tied in second with 15, uh, followed by Dom Francis and Ian Bennett and Vinny Dantas tied with 13 goals apiece through seven weeks. MASL Primetime. The Dallas Sidekicks uh, haven't had the greatest start to their season, although there have been a lot of positives still to draw on. Uh, and here we're going to talk about it today with the voice of the Dallas Sidekicks, also actually the voice of the Mesquite Outlaws. But for today's purposes, we're talking Sidekicks. Matt Thornton. Uh, Matt, welcome to MASL Primetime, my friend. Hey, Alex, man, thanks so much for having me. I love your show, what you're doing, so much fun. Uh, you know, a really great job on MASL Primetime. Everybody's watching it and talking about you. You're the talk of the town. The check's in the mail. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate the nice <laughs> comments. But also, you know what? Great Sidekicks broadcast, by the way. Absolutely love it. TV Thank production, you. you guys look good. You sound great. Okay, enough of this stuff. Let's get to it, though. Uh, two and seven to start the season. Uh, should be mentioned, of course, big win over Tacoma on Sunday, which was essential for you guys. But let's be honest, it's been a bit of a rough start so far. So just talk about that, uh, the start they've had and, and how you think they've played so far. You know, this is a team in transition, Alex. It really is. When you look at the Dallas Psychics, they have 26 rostered players. 12 of them are rookies. 12 of their six forwards, four of those forwards are rookies. They scored at 188 points last season. 118 of those points are now on other teams. Wow. They went out in, in, in free agency. You mentioned the Mesquite Outlaws. This veteran players moved over to the Outlaws. We'll talk about that, I know, later. Uh, give us some positives, though, from what you've seen so far. What's been working for the sidekicks? Well, I'll tell you, d d d surprisingly enough, their defense has been fantastic. Juan Gamboa, in my opinion, one of the best 
goalies in the league. Uh, he's uh, right now fifth best save percentage, .710. Defenders, Ray Aguayo, he's second in the league. Uh, he's got 15 blocks. And then, of course, Christian Quintana is a defender, has really been transitioning to a fantastic two-way player. They shut down Leo Gibson of the Kansas City yes. Commons and Nick Pereira yep. as well. Shut him down to only one assist. So you really have to like in their wins uh, and frequently their defense is doing a very nice job. And when you shut down the reigning MASL MVP, you know when your defense is doing something right. Uh, Freddie Mugin played for Utica City last season where he averaged over a point per game. Great pickup for the sidekicks this year. I uh, tied for the uh, team lead in scoring. And, of course, you were mentioning as well before, he's a former Dallas sidekick, so he's come home. Tell us about Freddie's game. Yeah, six goals and one assist this season. And Red, Freddie really had a tough week. He lost his father unexpectedly oh, to a heart attack, uh, passed at the age of 66. John, Freddie was playing as grit. He was a warrior. He went out and played anyways in spite of the loss of his dad. And the guy has brought this veteran calm to this team, a much needed point target man. He's taken players, these rookies I mentioned, Lipe de Andrade, uh, some of these Brazilian folks. He's taken them under their wings. He was a really, really important addition as a veteran, kind of savvy, calm player, and, and really done a nice job. He's, he's an incredible player on the field, great guy off the field as well. Yeah, he's doing such a great job this year. You are sharing the Dallas market now with the expansion <laughs> Mesquite Outlaws, who you also broadcast for. Uh, aside from the fact that they've so far beaten the sidekicks all three times they yeah. faced each other this year. Uh, I mean, obviously, you must see a lot of positives about this new rivalry, though. And it's spiced things up a bit in Big D on the soccer scene, I, I'm, I'm assuming I could say. Man, it's been fantastic. Are you kidding me? I love this. I mean... Personally, I'm biased because I drive my car 30 minutes exactly. to an away <laughs> game, right, uh, to do the broadcast. But, uh, you know, Tattoo is the head coach yes. now of the Mesquite Outlaws, the legend. It's it's weird seeing a guy like Tattoo not in a Dallas Sidekicks uniform or shirt, right? So it's very strange. But a lot of the players for the Outlaws are ex-Sidekicks players. So people need to realize uh, the top guys, uh, Jamie Lovegrove, Vic Moraligwe, Cody Ellis, Mike Jones, they were all playing in Simone Boza's system for the last three seasons. So they know the they know system. It. It's almost unfair to judge the sidekicks based on those three losses because nobody knows that system as well as the Mesquite Outlaws teams uh, do. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, it's an unfair advantage almost, isn't it? But listen, <laughs> it really is. Like I said, it's it's been a lot of fun to watch you guys, despite only two wins on the season so far, shutting down that KC team. Huge win, big win over Tacoma. I think there are better things in store for Dallas down the road. Thank you for joining us. We are going to have you on again for sure. But thanks oh, man, so much for taking the time today, and Happy New Year, my friend. Hey, Happy New Year. Great job again, Alex. Thank you so much. been an honor. Okay, some highlights before we head to break. Hide your small children. This was frightening. A slaughter in Rochester at the hands of the Florida Tropics. Ricardo Carvalho getting the party started. At one nothing. up to zip Zach Reggett. Puts the Tropics up by three scores. On to the second quarter. Reggett with his second of the contest. And that made it 4 nothing for the Floridians. The Lancers get one back. Tim Crawford. Uh, awesome nice passing. He provides the finish to draw Rochester within a three. But then it's Carvalho charging hard to the net. Roofing it to make it 5-1. We'll spare you the rest of the carnage. Suffice to say, it was a rough day for the Lancers. They go down 17-4 to the powerful Tropics. Ouch. MASL primetime, probably the most shocking result early in the MASL season was when San Diego dropped their season opener 
to the Cal Express. Now remember, this is a team that lost one single regular season game last year. So falling to a squad that had finished last place in their division was stunning to say the least. I mean, come on, these are the Sockers. 14-time arena soccer champions. Expectations are massive every time these guys step on the floor. Well, after that initial shock, San Diego has gotten things back on track. They'd reeled off six straight wins when they hosted Ontario last Saturday. Game highlights in this segment are brought to you by Sports Resource Group, proud partner of the MASL, SRG, building walls that bring us together. A Southern Cal battle. San Diego hoping to shut down Frank Taillou and the Fury. Taylor Bond starts things off with the Sockers. Juicy moves out front. Shelves it past Chris Toth. One zip San Diego. Second quarter, Ontario fighting back Justin Stinson. Smacking the one-timer past Boris Pardo. Tie it up. Three minutes later, it's Stinson again. Uh, ripping it past Pardo to give the Fury its first lead of the contest. But Taylor Bond responding with his second of the game with a sweet little volley right there. This one was tied 3-3. In the fourth quarter, uh, up until this point. But all it takes is one good move, and this could be the one as Bond gets the steal. Flankers out. It's Piffer. He scores! Craig Elston with the great call as the Sockers managed to hold on for the 4 3 win. We had to try to, to pick the right moments to go Woo! up and try to score, and that's what, that's what we did. We, it's all about the team, you know, you have to know the, the right time to go up and we, we had the patience to defend and, and get this win. It was, a, it was really hard and uh, at the end of the day, that, 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 that's why it matters. Okay, Monterey hosting St. Louis and man, the ambush had a tough couple of games in Mexico. They were facing the league's top team, the Flash, and the home squad draws first blood, just a buck ten in. Brian Aguilar opens the scoring for Monterey. We'll get back to Brian shortly. With the score 2-0, uh, Damian Garcia adds to the ambush headache. In it goes. Second quarter, Eduardo Gray just powers forward, blasts it past the keeper. Fours it, Monterey. The ambush finally get on the board. Nice touch here by JT Thomas, the Englishman, going roof daddy to make it a three-goal game. But this summed up the St. Louis game. Uh, defensive miscue, Miguel Vaca making them pay. 5-1 flash at that point. Told you we'd get back to Brian Aguilar. He's challenging for the MASL scoring lead and he shredded St. Louis in the second half with a score 7-2. He taps it home to make it eight. And then with the uh, score 9-3, Brian makes it 10 with the nifty little header right there. And then it's Aguilar with the soft touch of the game that is oh so pretty. Aguilar with five goals in the game, six points total as Monterey continues its torrid start to the season, undefeated through eight games. Okay, let's check out who made the naughty list for this week. Just because Christmas is over, doesn't mean the naughty list goes away. Ivan Acuna of Sonora getting a two game suspension for this naughtiness against San Diego back on December 29th. The dangerous check on Brandon Escoto nearly caused a full scale brawl. Two game suspension for Acuna. Okay, the team of the week, uh, for week number seven, and uh, it's led by Brian Aguilar, uh, Hugo Puentes, Enrique Canez, Dylan Hundelt, Mike Jones, and uh, goalie Rafa Diaz, and the Sport Turf Primetime Player of the Week for Week 7 is Rafa Diaz of the Milwaukee Wave. The first time actually a keeper has made it this year. Rafa came up big against the Kansas City Comets. Uh, making 14 saves and racking up a .824 save percentage in the win over the Comets last weekend. And our primetime plays of the week. Number five, and Daniel Peruzzi of Baltimore, scintillating strike against Florida. Number four, there wasn't a ton to cheer about in Rochester last week, but that strike by Gary Bouton brought the home crowd to its feet. Number three, Enrique Canez of Sonora, the acrobatic strike against St. Louis uh, in the Big Soles win. Number two, Tacoma's Alex Megson one-ups him. The gorgeous tally to help lead the stars over Mesquite. I mean, he skies for that one. Love it. And number one, Tacoma's Michael Ramos going through half the Dallas team here. 
dipping and diving, and then finally putting it home. Dirty. That is our prime time play of the week. And that's going to wrap things up for today. But uh, just a reminder, MASLsoccer.com is your home base for all things in the major arena soccer league. And there's all kinds of other social media to keep you up to date as well. Thank you so much for watching MASL Prime Time. We'll see you next week.